Welcome to In the Blue. I am your host, Corey Frogley. Excited to be with you and my special guest today, Dan Blair. We are focusing today on the morning huddle and why that is so important and more importantly, how to go through the process. Now remember, we're all about digestible data and giving you the tools of scalability. And Dan Blair is an expert in this because he comes from a background of not just dental and practice management, he comes from the background of truly business organizations. He has his MBA. Um, he, he belongs to so many certifications. I don't have time to go through them all, but one of them, which is key, is that the Six Sigma certification, which is, is no joke. This is the kind of people that run serious organizations. Um, he also uh, is part of the International Honor Society, uh, Alpha Beta Kappa Honor Society, uh, superior academic achievements that I could list, list, and list, but the, the, in line, you guys know that we're bringing you the best of the best, and Dan Blair is one of those that we feel honored to have on our show, and he has started a company, another company of his many, uh, called Dental Advantage, and he's bringing us today his expertise on why the morning huddle is so important, and, and not just the why behind it, but the specifics of how to engage your team to run it appropriately. So Dan, we are so honored to have you here. By the end of the show, our doctors are gonna have the expertise of how to make their morning huddles that much more important. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me, Corey. I appreciate it, it's truly an honor. Thank you. Well, let's dive into this. Tell us why morning huddles are so important, especially for those doctors who may be new or may, may kind of got lazy and they're just kind of showing up to the practice right before the day starts. Yeah. So the morning huddle is essential for any type of growing practice, right? Most of the practices, what they find difficult is either how to organize it or what they should go ahead and focus on. Uh, sometimes they're focusing on the wrong things. Sometimes we're just reading off of the schedule. Those, those aren't the things that are going to go ahead and, and help us. Um, the daily huddle is essential for team alignment and team engagement. Anytime I'm a big sports guy, I like to use sports analogies. Um, you know, you have to have a game plan or you have to have a battle plan. And Corey, you know better than, than me when you've, you've been in the office, you know, and it's sometimes it feels like a battle, right? <laughs> when, when you're starting the day. Yeah. So, you know, you can't, you have to have a game plan. You have to have a, a battle plan for the day. The team needs to have a clear direction of what that day looks like. They need to know how to execute and what that execution is going to go ahead and, and look like. Mm. No, that's fantastic. And, and, do you agree with the concept that the daily huddle is more not about to talk about the normal? I mean, that's not, we all know how to operate in the normal flow of patients. So reviewing the schedule isn't, isn't to talk about the normal appointments for the day. It's, it's to really look at the challenging aspects and the strategy of how to deal with those challenging parts of the schedule. Does that, that make sense? Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the morning huddle you should go, you know, you should focus on the, on the team communication. You should focus on schedule optimization and you should be looking at improving the patient experience. Mm -hmm. Now, what I mean by those is most of the offices that I've been in with that are highly effective, highly efficient practices have very good team communication, not only from the front, but to the back. Everyone's mm -hmm. on the same page. Everyone's rowing in the same direction. Schedule optimization it's just not the responsibility of the front office or the front desk to go ahead and be in charge of the schedule. Yeah. Everyone should know who's coming in, what's on the schedule, what are our open times, what are those, what are those conveniences that we need to go ahead and, and give that patient experience. Yeah. Um, you know, by improving the patient experience, when the team is aligned, when the team is engaged, it's a different feel in the office. The patients have a better experience, the office seems to flow better, Overall, the experience is just phenomenal. So those things we want to go ahead and make sure that we're intentional about what we're doing in the morning huddle. I love that because so often we train the front desk to schedule in a very specific way. And we know we have different chairs, different rooms, different procedures. So they, they kind of get the whole concept of how to make it efficient. But there's this ability where the doctor may have this knowledge about a patient coming in for a procedure 
that they're harnessing that they haven't shared with anybody. And they know that when that patient comes in to do that procedure, it's going to take a little longer or vice versa. Maybe the front desk discovered something on the phone that the patient coming in has some things to talk about and some complicating factors. And so if I'm understanding you clearly, this is what the morning huddle is for is to transfer that in intelligence. Absolutely. Absolutely. You've, you, you hit the nail on the head with that. I mean, you know, the morning huddle needs to be intentional. The morning huddle should be like any other meeting that you have. It needs to, you need to go ahead and prepare for it. So you have to, at least the day before apply and, and, and what you're going to be discussing in your morning huddle that next morning. And that's part of the preparation. It's like any other meeting. And to your point on there, Corey, when we're looking at what the, you know, specifics there's four things that we want to go ahead and focus in on. If you're not currently doing huddles right now or your huddles aren't to what you want them to be, there's four items that we really want to go ahead and focus in on. That we'll go ahead and make that easy. One is who's coming into the practice. The other one is unscheduled treatment or pending possible treatment that might be mm. out there that patients are coming in. Financial obligation and open time on the schedule. Nice. If we concentrate on those four things day in and day out and we nail those things, that's going to go ahead and help improve our huddle. So I'd like to break down each one of those in a little bit of detail on there. So when we talk about who's coming in, that's exactly to your point on there. Those new patient conversations that front office has on that initial call, because the new patient experience begins with that initial call, right? Mm -hmm. So when we're getting that, what are some of the things that we can go ahead and contribute in the morning huddle that we might have picked up on that initial call that would be vital to our clinicians for building rapport with that patient when they come in? Right. Those are the kind of things. That's to your point. What are the little nuances that we know that we can contribute? And now front office, back office, clinicians are all on the same page with some of that verbiage. Do we have patients that need pre-med coming in? Did they pre-med before they came in? Those are, those are things that can throw off our schedule, right? If we're waiting for a patient to take a pre-med for 30 minutes before we take them back, we just now delayed us, right? Yeah, so exactly. those are the kind of things of, you know, any other important nuances that we can go ahead and utilize to know who's coming into the practice. Yeah. No, I love that. I love that. And as, you're, as you focus on that, that is one of the cool things, just kind of let our audience know to kind of, this is a, a little pre-release of where we're headed, but we're bringing you the morning insights. And with Blue IQ, as you open up that home screen, those key things that, that Blair just talked about will be hand-delivered to you right on a platter on the home screen of who's coming in, who owes you money, who's missing certain things, and, uh, and will help you run this you know, super efficiently as, as Anzik's describing. Absolutely. And Corey, you know, to that, to, to your point on there with Blue IQ, when we're looking at that, one of the things we want to talk about in the huddle is where are we as an office, right? Where are we currently month to date with our production? What do we currently have to go ahead and do to obtain that production? We mm -hmm. have what we're on the 15th of the month right now. We have technically about what another, another possibly 10, 10 to 12 working days in the schedule. Yeah. So what does that look like? Where are we at currently with our goal? What do we need to produce per day in order to go ahead and, and reach that goal? Is yeah. everyone on top of that? Is everyone aware of that? So those are the things. Who's coming in? What are the patients? What are our opportunities? And that's a great point because believe it or not, we've worked with clinics where, um, you know, we look at same day production. What production was added to the schedule that wasn't on the, the schedule at the start of the day? And sometimes the front office or the back office aren't communicating as well to know where that schedule should or those that production should be plugged in. And if the provider who's providing it feels like it just like you stretch me beyond my my capacity because they don't have the mind frame of we're behind on production. We have got to ramp up our production to get to where we need to be. So how do we unify the team? What is your best secrets in bringing the team together to be all on board to, you know what, let's stretch ourselves a little bit. We, we need to make up that ground. How do you do that? 
You know, the one one way with the team, it, it, team engagement, team alignment, that is that is big. Communication within the office. And Corey, you know better than anyone. I don't under, I don't understand how that 30 free feet from the back to the front, and then we don't understand what we're supposed to schedule, what we're supposed to collect, or what we're supposed to go ahead and, and move on for the next time, you know? So yeah. the morning huddle is just absolutely essential to get the team on board with what the day is going to look like. We have a game plan of how that looks and where and where we're going. Now, this is along with the with with the the morning huddle. The team should be having weekly meetings as well. That's going to go ahead and align the team with what needs to be done. If you were waiting a couple of weeks or a month to go ahead and address things that can go ahead and be addressed now, those those that's when things slip through the cracks, and then that's when we start to get disengaged with the team. Mm. Um, we've had you know depending upon the office right each office responds differently we've had things where we've went ahead and we have a shoe box and everyone puts in something about their peers that is great that they like or that they seem they've gone the extra mile whatever that might look like and every day in huddle they read one of those to the team mm -hmm. at the very end just as a as hey it's let's great. go ahead and let's attack this guys you guys did great or you know i saw susie and she, she went ahead, she went the extra mile for that patient. She brought him a pillow. The patient was in pain. Whatever the case might be, that's what we want. We want to start our day where we're pumped, we're ready to go into action. Yeah, I love that. I love that because that helps bring that uni unity that the team desperately needs. We deal with enough crap, <laughs> whether it's in our personal lives or patients throwing it on us, that we don't need to be shoveling poop to each other. And right. I, that's a great point. Yeah. You know, the looking at looking at the you know, we can kind of lump in a couple of items on there. When we're looking at those patients coming in and we're looking at unscheduled treatment or financial obligations, right? What does that go ahead and what does that what does that tell us about those patients that are coming in? Yes, we already have our schedule, but we have patients that are coming in that possibly have pending treatment. They've went ahead and they have not done any treatment on it. And we know that in any industry, whether it's dentistry or, or not, things do not get better over time. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so those are the things we want to take a look at. And then also, I get it. We're here for the patient experience. We're here for the patient education. We're here to go ahead and provide them a great experience. However, we still need to keep the lights on at the end of the day, right? So we Absolutely. need to know who owes us money. Where are some of the obligations? Do we have family members that are coming in that maybe we skipped a payment or that there's something that we might need? Or maybe we have pending treatment that we have a history with this patient that we can offer financial obligation or we do not want to offer financial obligation to this patient, right? Yeah, so yeah. those are very important things that we go ahead and that we need to take a look at during the huddle as well so we can have discovery because that patient might be coming in in the dental world through hygiene that has a crown pending mm -hmm. that might not see the doctor's schedule, right? Yeah. Or vice versa, depending upon what that might look like. So those are definitely things that we want to go ahead and, and we want to, we want to focus. And now Corey, I'm just going to throw this out to you. Yeah. How many times have you went ahead and have you gone into the office and you've looked at the schedule and there's open time on the schedule and no one can tell you about it? Yeah. How frustrating is that as a provider? Super frustrating, right? I mean, one, you don't want to go ahead and see 20 plus patients a day and produce nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And two, you don't want to go ahead and you don't want to be playing Candy Crush on your phone half of the day because you have no patients, right? Right. <laughs> I want to produce. So, right. So when we're, when we're looking at the, the team alignment, team communication, we want to also look at what the open time is in the schedule. Not only should the front know, the back should know too, because what are those conversations that are happening in the back? What happens to that patient then now you've spent time educating the patient of why they need to go ahead and get onto that treatment. And we don't know when our next appointment is. Yeah. We got the patient excited now. Well, I think we might have something next week. We'll go up front and check with the girls up front. Oh. No. Just that phrase just just made my heart sink. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, Dr. Corey has availability on Thursday at two o'clock. Does that sound good? Yeah. Those those are the things that that when we're really looking to go ahead and execute as a team and with high efficiencies, it starts off with how do we start the day? 
Are we coming in? We are, our huddle is 15 minutes before we start, right? 15 minutes to go through. Do we have people that are, that, that are in the huddle with their coffee and eating breakfast and disengaged? doing their hair or their makeup, whatever the case might be, or do we, do we have a set precedence that says, hey, this is our standard, 15 minutes before we have our huddle, we go through these items, we have a game plan, and now we go ahead and we attack the day. You know, and that's, that's such an important thing for those team members to be engaged. And, and if I could kind of re-summarize what you've just said, because it's powerful, and that is looking at patients coming in with some pending treatment. And as a team, who has the pieces of the puzzle, so to speak, the communication that's taken place to know where that patient might be on making a decision to, ha to take care of that crown? And what if we know that that patient's coming in, that the, that the provider, the doctor, there could be a handoff from the hygienist to the doctor and going ahead and providing that. Like, what if we could resolve their financial concern today get them the financing or work out the payment arrangements and today provide that crown. And, and, you know, same day crowns are not always doable, but it depends on the practice uh, yeah. these days, but, but other procedures could be executed today. And where would we best execute that? Even if they had to go to lunch and come back and we, we do it in the afternoon. Absolutely. Absolutely. When you go ahead and ask most doctors and especially, especially within the dental realm, is hygiene has no time. Hygiene never has any time on their schedule, right? right? So what do we do with that patient that comes in that needs scaling and root planing? Are we just gonna go ahead and turn that a patient away? Or do we know in our schedule where our open time is? What, what financial obligations we can go ahead and offer this patient? Yeah. You know, you, you hit on a, a lot of key things on there uh, is, you know, which obviously would take us into a different topic, but the handoff, Super important, right? Transfer of trust. That's what it is. We're transferring the trust from, from, from the doctor or from the assistant or from the hygienist or from you know the, the, um, any of the clinical area to now who's going to be talking about financing or insurance. Very, very powerful. A lot of the things you mentioned on the record are very powerful. This is the tip of the iceberg, if you will of how to go ahead, but there's so many other things, right? New patient education, what is that new patient experience? The handoff, what does that look like? So there's a lot of different things that go in. This right here mm -hmm. is how we're gonna start our day, getting ourselves of what we need and how that's important to not only our team being involved, but our patients as well. Yeah, I tell you, bringing that team together into the mindset of same day production, I think is one of the most powerful things we can get a team aligned on because as you mentioned sports analogies I love sports analogies yeah. and if I'm a basketball player and I'm in the first quarter and I have an open lane to the rim and I decide ah I kind of wanted to schedule I, I kind of wanted to score those points in the third quarter I'm going to wait and, and score those in the third quarter well those are opportunities that you may schedule in the future but by taking advantage of the now to increase production by by just doing that two to three percent a day what that adds up to in a week a month and a year is extraordinary i mean we can see the overall production and collections of an office go up by 10 15 percent in a year by taking advantage of that same day production is, is that resonate with you Absolutely. Um, you know, my background and in, in where I come from, same day dentistry was a norm. Um, that was just something that, that was done. Yes, we had production on the books, but we also was looking at opportunities. What opportunities do we have coming in that we can go ahead and, and essentially make into same day treatment? Which when you go ahead and you start to break it down, when you look at your goals and where you are at the end of the month, and when you start to break it down, that was one more crown one more, one more uh, filling, one more SRP, whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. But that was the sense of urgency that we wanted to go ahead and we wanted to take a look at with our team. So if we look at the two types of individuals we traditionally see, you see people that love schedule and structure. And if you throw something into their schedule, they freak out. And then you, you see on the opposite side of the spectrum, people that thrive on the unexpected. And 
this is the person that's going to love same day production. This is going to be the person that doesn't love same day production. And how do you get the twain to meet and align and, and thrive together? Right. So that's a great, that's a great point, right? Um, when we're looking at that, that's knowing that's going back to our open time in the schedule. When we're looking at the scheduling, we're looking out at least a week, week and a half in the schedule. Where are our opportunities? Okay, today is Friday, but guess what? Tuesday of next week, we have nothing on the books. We need to go ahead and concentrate on what that looks like. So by forecasting out that week, week and a half, looking at that to see where are the holes in the schedule, and then also having the availability of those patients that want to come in earlier, when that hole arrives on that day, you have that patient that we can immediately go ahead and fill that hole. But do we have, and I think what it comes down to, and Corey, when you're second, when we're talking about blue IQ as well, is systems and processes. And that's exactly what it is. Do we have a system and a process in the office to go ahead and do the things we, that we're doing? We're starting with the morning huddle. We have the morning huddle. What does our morning huddle look like? How are we structuring that? Okay, now, what does that look like for our patient coming in? from the patient filtering in through the office to the patient walking out. Those are all the things that we need to go ahead and look at when we translate into processes and systems. And that exactly what you're talking about. Do we have processes and systems in place to go ahead and run our office effective and efficient? I love that. And that, as we conclude here, if I can wrap my arms around that, Dan just hit the nail on the head. And that is, do you have systems and processes in place that bring those two types of individuals together? And, and he's laying the foundation of how important that morning huddle is and understanding future, understanding forecasting, understanding where the holes are, how to fill them, getting the str strategy in the minds of your teammates to understand that. Like we're hunting today. We're hunting for um, – diagnoses that can be then scheduled, whether that's same day, whether that's tomorrow, we're, we're filling those holes by hunting. And uh, Dan, what a pleasure to have you on the show. I mean, that's just exciting to see what you're creating, what you're able to offer to these practices. And, and again, you've obviously put a tremendous amount of blood, sweat, and tears into your systems and processes. And I know you guys are coming out with some really, really exciting things that are like you can't find these things anywhere else out there. You're like patenting some things, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to um, announce anything before it's necessarily ready. But, but that's pretty exciting, Dan. Well, thank you, Corey. I, I, I truly appreciate being on a, you know, a part of a part of the show here. Um, you know, it's truly an honor to be a part of something that you know you you have such a big part in. And uh, again, I can't say enough. I'm truly honored to go ahead and and, and be a part of what you're doing. Yeah, I appreciate it. And, and more to come. So audience, yeah. stay tuned because there's more great things coming from Dan Blair and, uh, and his, his uh, consulting agency with Dental Advantage. Uh, on a side note, I want our audience to know we've put up a new group. It's a Facebook group and it's titled going from or go from red to blue because as you know, that's all about the levels of performance in uh, Blue IQ. And we want to get you in winning, and more importantly, we want to get you in the blue. And that's what these uh, these shows are all about: is giving you these actionable tips that you can you can put into practice Monday, Monday morning. Make your morning huddles better. And again, uh, you can find Dan Blair on his website. You can find him on LinkedIn. You can find him on Facebook, and and really take advantage of their resources. So. Thank you for joining our show today. We'll be back next week with uh, another fantastic episode of In the Blue. Remember, we're live at uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 noon Eastern, uh, bringing you digestible shows over a cup of coffee so you guys can continue to sharpen your leadership skills and run the practice of your dreams. Thank you for being with us today.